This is Office Talk with Annette Stepanian. Hi, everyone. It's Annette again. Thank you so much for listening. So how many of you guys have ever been interested in incorporating some sort of social cause element to your business? So we see so many businesses nowadays. There's like Tom's and Warby Parker. There's the Honest Company, 31 Bits, the Giving Keys. I mean, tons and tons of companies out there now that incorporate a social cause element as part of their business foundation. So If this is of any interest to you, then I am super excited you're here because I am going to be talking to my good friend, Megan City. So she is the founder of M Collaborative, which is a boutique consultancy agency, and she works basically with brands to help them incorporate a social impact element into their business, both offline and online. She's also the co-founder of the Heart Series, where her co-founder Gail and her bring together a whole bunch of businesses that are social cause businesses, and they get together for two days and talk about and share experiences and best practices. So I want you to stay tuned, listen to what she has to say, and wait until the end because she's going to be giving away a discount code for the next Heart Series coming up in February. Megan, 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 I am so excited to have you here because I absolutely adore you. If you and don't. I'm excited to be here because <laughs> I adore you. This should just be like a love fest for 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I, will, I will happily have a love fest with you for 30 minutes. <laughs> so I wanted to have you on because not only do I adore you and I think you're amazing, but you also do some really interesting work that I wanted to introduce our listeners to. So can you just bring everybody up to speed and let us know what you're all about? Sure. Yeah. So that is the question. I feel like people are constantly like, oh, you have so many cool projects you're working on. How does it all go together? So the gist of it is I run a marketing agency full-time called M Collaborative that helps brands build communities and create awareness online and offline that's socially impactful. And I use that term really loosely because I think there's a lot of ways you can make a social impact. And we can talk about that a little bit more later on. But that's the main focus of what I do. And I started that about three and a half years ago after working in the nonprofit sector for about 10 years and seeing this sort of new wave of businesses kind of transpire with Tom's and Warby Parker and people really understanding, you know, the nonprofit and the mission side of what I loved about what I was doing, but figuring out ways to make it sustainable and profitable. And I just got excited by that. And whether people were doing it right or wrong, you know, I think there's still a lot of debate around that. But I wanted to be a part of this sort of new purpose driven business that was coming about. And I I watched it happen for a few years before I, I took a leap of faith and started my business. And so I built a business around just that. And then from there, I've co created a conference that brings together people who want to kind of play in this space. So the conference is called the Heart Series. We've had everyone from big brands like Etsy and Honest Company, which is Jessica Alba's company, to smaller startups that are just trying to figure things out. And this is really an opportunity for people to come together, learn best practices from experts and consultants and entrepreneurs in this space, and just kind of share and grow and figure out how to launch socially impactful businesses. Yeah. And I was lucky enough to be at the first annual Heart Series, I think about two years ago. And I have to say that that energy in that room after I think it was a day long conference or maybe a day and a half, it just was so positive. And you could really feel just the energy of people wanting to collaborate and work together. So I think part of the great energy was due to the fact that it was, you know, you and Gail, who's your co-creator, did such a great job curating both the guests and also the attendees. 
But I had never been to a conference like that where I was like, wow, people are actually doing good and they're feeling good about it. <laughs> yeah. And then that was really exciting for us because we wanted to create a culture and an environment that, you know, would be the ideal of what we would want out of a conference. And, you know, it was really interesting the way it kind of all transpired because Gail had called me out of the blue about two and a half years ago or so. And about a year after we met and, you know, just after I had started my business and she co-founded a jewelry line that's socially impactful with her sisters. And they were really trying to figure out how to grow that social impact piece of their business. They work with women artisans in the Philippines to source local product and teach them fashionable trends. And then they're the conduit to sell the jewelry here in the United States. And they're in Bloomingdale's and a bunch of other boutiques around the country. And she called me to see if I could help her figure out where to go to meet other people in this space. Cause she's like, if anyone will know, this was so flattering. She's like, if anyone will know, it would be you. Like, where are there conferences? Are there events? Like, where can I go to figure out this piece of my business? And we started talking about it and there just wasn't anything like it. I mean, there were a few conferences, you know, Feast on Good does a really great job out of New York, the Mashable Social Good Conference. Um, but there wasn't anything like what we were describing. We wanted to kind of have have this, you know, intimate 150 person, the best of the best playground for people to come together and not only learn, but also to, you know, actually put into practice what they're gathering from the people at the event. So we wanted like part TED Talks, part panels, but also part workshop. And we also wanted a place for people to collaborate. And Gail's background happened to be in event planning for a gaming company. She had done like a bunch of events for them and was like, you know what? I think between you and me and our networks, we could really do something big. If we pool our resources and we pool our networks, I think we can create a space and a venue for us to bring this community together. And, you know, for me to like get to actually learn from people that are working in the space alongside me and for you to get to meet all the other people that, you know, have inspired you to start your business. And so we just kind of geeked out over it, got excited, threw some feelers out. And the chief of social goodness at Honest Company was the first person to say, yeah, I'm in. What do you need? Happy to speak. Like, just let me know. And so once Jessica Alba's company was on board, we're like, okay, we've got something here. This is exciting. Like people obviously are going to be excited about this. And we were getting, you know, immediate responses from our initial speakers that they wanted to be involved. So we just kind of ran with it. It's awesome. And I mean, there was such a breath of companies being represented there. I mean, a lot of product-based companies that use, whether it's an environmental cause, a social cause, anything, trying to bring, you know, economic opportunities to maybe underserved areas. I mean, there just were such a breath. So you guys are now on to your third year? It's going to be our third year. Yeah. That's awesome. And this year we've really made a conscious decision to try to have every element of the conference be impactful. So, you know, everything down to, we even donated a bunch of the furniture to a local nonprofit. We had an, a socially conscious like decor company that did some pillows and blankets that works with artisans in third world countries to create the products. And we partnered with some of the most sustainable food brands in LA. So we've just really taken a, made it a point to walk our walk. Nice. So a lot of the people who are listening are probably running their own small business, maybe thinking about starting one. And what are some tips that you could give a business owner? Like how can they incorporate a socially, like a social cause element to their business? Sure. And I think this also applies to, I know most of your audience is entrepreneurs, but even entrepreneurs and people who are trying to help their businesses or brands that they work for or have worked for for years to be more impactful. There's a few different things you can do. I kind of call them like my five pillars to making an impact. So I think the biggest thing is to take risks. I think you have to really kind of figure out how do you go against the status quo? I mean, case in point, I think Tom's, whether you agree with their business model or not, really took a chance and said, we're going to make this mission a huge part of our business. That's a risk. And it worked for them. So risk-taking is kind of the first one. I think 
hands down as an entrepreneur, you know, we're problem solvers. So for me, that's really the second thing is like, figure out the problems around you, like what's happening right around you that you can solve. And I've seen quite a few businesses come out of this sort of problem solving act. Like they, it was totally unintentional. They were solving a problem around them. And one case that I love to bring up is the giving keys, their founder, literally just wanted to help this homeless couple she met on the street one night. And lo and behold, like found out the woman who was homeless was also a jewelry maker. Caitlin, who's the founder of The Giving Keys, wanted to turn these old keys she had into necklaces that had inspiring words on them. And basically from the sheer like solution of like, Hey, you make jewelry, you're homeless. I want to make these key necklaces. I'll pay you to help me make them. That transpired into a whole business. And now the giving keys is like one of the most well-known inspiring jewelry companies. They're just doing amazing work. I think that's like a very small step that was taken in solving a problem that transpired into this really amazing company. I think one of the other things that's part of these you know, sort of pillars to impact is building community. And I mean, that's exactly what Gail and I were doing with the Heart Series. Our problem was we there was nowhere for this community to come together. And so we're like, okay, well, let's let's build a community of people. Let's bring them together. Let's build a network, you know, and Seth Godin talks a lot about this. If any marketing folks are out there or anyone, even if you're not, like if you're trying to figure out how to market your business, he talks a lot about building tribes. And I really agree, like wholeheartedly, I think building community is the best way to make an impact and be socially impactful. Collaboration is another thing that I think is really important. I think that the more people team up, the bigger impact they'll make. You know, I think Gail also runs a brand partnerships company in addition to the jewelry line. And I think we could have very easily said to each other, you know, hey, you run a marketing agency over there and I run one over here and like, uh, we're in competition. But for us, like collaborating actually opened so many doors, more doors for both of us and also just helped us kind of be inspired. And so I think that collaboration is really important to making an impact. And then the biggest way you can make an impact is by telling true stories. So I think, you know, that hugely builds trust and allows even more to transpire in your business. And so telling true stories is huge. And those are like more, I think, overarching sort of ways to live by in your business that I think will help you make a bigger impact. I've got lots of little examples of small things. Like I had a client who was making these bags and she ended up partnering with Downtown Women's Center to employ people from the Downtown Women's Center to make the bags with her. I have another company I was talking to the other day that is a fitness bag company and they're looking at doing like a wellness day. I mean, anything can be impactful. I think you have to look at who's around you, what's happening, solve little problems around you. And that's where you're going to start to see bigger things happen. And that's kind of the best sort of advice I could give you on how to make a bigger impact in your business. Yeah. And I think oftentimes we think it has to be this big thing, which ideally, you know, making some sort of social impact is really important. Then you start that at the birth of your company, right? You have it ingrained in it. I mean, I remember there was, I don't remember the name of the company, but it was these guys, I think they were like surfing engineers and they went to Mexico maybe. And there was basically a lot of waste in the water and they were able to like use that waste to create recycled. Burrio who turned the recycled fishing line into skateboards. Yeah. Like that's so cool. But I mean, for most of us- that might That's be a little out of reach. Practical for everyone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, I don't think that everyone needs to be, you know, making clean water in Africa. And it's about little things. And for me, like I use social impact really loosely in my business because I think every little thing can make a big impact for people. I think at the root of what I do, I really care about people. So within that, it's like, okay, well, what can you do? Even if it's a small step, for your company to make a bigger impact. And sometimes that's something as simple as culture. Like when you're hiring people, what are the benefits you're giving them? That could be impactful. You're impacting your employees who will therefore then do a better job in your business. That's still social impact. So I think it's looking at little things. It's solving little problems and taking the risk to solve them. And then that in turn will 
draw more people to your work and what you're doing. Awesome. It's really good advice. So it doesn't have to be this huge thing. You don't have to be solving world hunger. You right. could be making a small impact in just your local community or just within your business. Absolutely. And all it takes is one person and one tiny step to make a difference. Yeah. It's funny because when you're so busy with the day to day, you know, you're like, oh, I, I can't even, you know, I need to do my own thing. I have, you know, I have to keep up with my finances. I got to keep up with my clients. I got to keep up with these orders. You know, it can get, feel like another to do. And it doesn't mean that every, it's right for every business to have this impact, but. Right. I mean, listen, I think it matters and I don't think it's necessarily meant to be part of everyone's business DNA. But I think if you can make small steps towards figuring out what your impact as a business is, because at the end of the day, every business has to make some sort of impact. You know, if it's a social good impact, great, all the better. But I think, you know, it's about taking those small strides towards whatever you know is what your business can do in terms of making an impact and trying your best to work towards that. But yeah, you definitely don't have to necessarily bake it into your brand's DNA. I think we're seeing a lot more of that. And I actually, earlier this year, I was giving a talk on how, you know, we're going to start to see a lot more companies starting to figure out how to incorporate mission into their business. And we're going to start seeing a lot more nonprofits figure out how to build sustainable business models. But we're still a long ways away from that. And I think the fact that we're even talking about it, thinking about it is a step in the right direction. And I think if your listeners, you know, are interested in the topic and willing to even sort of make small steps, that's a huge impact that can result from that. Yeah, I mean, just the fact that as a legal entity, you can be certified as a benefit corporation, Mm -hmm. which basically says that you're going to not only look at profits as like a primary, you know, the financial component is not going to be the primary driver for your shareholders. It's also going to be the social impact that you make. So sometimes you may make decisions that may not have the most financial return, but it's also going to create a social impact. And Yeah, just the fact that that entity exists and there's a possibility is very promising for companies in the future and what they can create. Absolutely. And then there's these superstars out there that are triple bottom line companies. I mean, they've mastered profits, they help people, and they also are just amazingly sustainable and good for the environment. And, you know, there's a great example of a company here in LA called Isidore where they take technology, they recycle it, they employ formerly incarcerated people to help recycle it, and they're profiting by charging big businesses to come pick up all their old technology and take it off their hands for them. So it's this amazing concept of triple bottom line. And I think that's like the ultimate, right? Not everyone's going to be a triple bottom line company, but it's something to work towards and strive for and see how can you fit into that equation and what can you do to make your company that more impactful? Because that's when you're going to have great stories about the work you're doing to tell your customers that will then translate even into more people wanting to work with you as a business. Yeah. And so one of the pillars that you mentioned was community. And I have to say that I think you are so, so good at developing relationships and community. Like it's so natural to you. Like I wouldn't Mm -hmm. even call you, you're not a networker in that like sleazy way where you're like at a party and you're like giving your card out to everybody. Like, call me, call me. It's just who you are. Uh, I love meeting new people. I just, I love people. You're, and people love you. <laughs> oh, thanks. I just like um, collecting people. I think people's stories fascinate me. But um, it's so natural to you. And it's something that I think is what makes you very unique and just a great, not only a great per- person, but also a great resource. So can you share maybe some of your tips on how people can build that community and those relationships in an authentic way? Because I feel like most of us are stuck behind our computers and sure. and you're really out there and you're, I mean, sure. you're like the yellow pages you know everybody shut up (laughs) oh my gosh let me tell people that i'll I'll start getting random calls for all kinds of things tomorrow (laughs) no we can edit it out but i'm I'm just just kidding i'm just kidding yeah i think for me like like i said i'm really fascinated by people's stories and i think for me that just comes natural i'm just genuinely interested in where people came from where people are going how they got there that fascinates me and that actually to me has worked to my advantage because it it allows me to build a real sort of connection between people and i think at the end of the day we all want to feel you know heard 
I want people to actually take an active interest in what I'm doing because if I'm passionate and you're passionate about what I'm passionate about, that makes me want to talk to you more. And so for me, like I'm, you know, I'm naturally interested in what other people's passions are. So that's allowed me to build sort of this massive network of people and find commonalities when we're talking about their passion to make us even more interested in kind of learning and talking with one another. I think that if this isn't necessarily something that comes natural to you, if you kind of, and I know there's a lot of introverts out there too, who can be overwhelmed by, you know, really getting into the weeds of what people are doing and why they're doing it and what makes them tick. And that's not to say that, you know, there aren't, I'm an extrovert and there are times where I'm exhausted too at networking events and just can't bear to talk to one person because I'm so tired. I think that at the end of the day, if you really look for commonalities, you'll find them. And I think it's also about just genuinely finding those commonalities and seeing what you can learn from that person as well as offer to that person without, you know, being overbearing and overly salesy about what you have to offer. But I think for me, it's, it's about not only what can I learn from this person, but what can I give to this person in terms of new knowledge or new information or, you know, maybe it's a connection. Like I think every meeting I go to, I'm like, oh, you need to meet this person. And this goes back to like, I have, I guess, this really random network of people. So I'm o- I am always am like, let me introduce you to so-and-so because I think you guys will find something to talk about or like maybe you can learn from one another or maybe you can help each other do this. Yeah. And I think the key is you're doing it without the expectation of receiving anything in return. And then you're also making, it's like the connection, but it's, you're making connections in the sense of like, you're putting two pieces of the puzzle together and you're taking that initiative. You're connecting the dots for people. And I think that's where people sometimes drop the ball in terms of, okay, well, I had this great interaction with somebody. I think they're awesome. And then that's it, you know, or maybe they don't follow up with them or maybe they don't think like, huh, how can I really really, is there somebody I know that can help them or be a good potential referral? And I think you do that really, really well. Yeah. And I think the thing is people have a tendency to really quickly write off someone if they don't see the value immediately. And the funny thing is like, I'll be talking to someone and suddenly someone I met at a networking event three years ago will pop into mind who I, you know, maybe I haven't followed up with as much as I would like to, but at the time, like, didn't know exactly where or how they fit into my world. And I'll be having a coffee with a potential client and go, oh my gosh, you know, I met this person three years ago at this event and you need to talk to them. Like they are exactly who you should be talking to. And so for me, it's like, I, I don't discount anyone because I feel like for me, it's worked to my advantage that I always find ways to bring them into my world somehow. It might not be right away, but maybe, you know, two, three years down the line, there's an opportunity where it's like suddenly that's the person I need. And I think that that's where people sometimes tend to miss out or lose out because they discounted someone so quickly right away because they didn't see a direct correlation. And then it's like, lo and behold, two years down the road, you're like, oh my gosh, that person, that's exactly who I need now. So if you can't make the connection right away, I think the important thing to note is that it will come. You just have to kind of wait for it. <laughs> yeah. And it's, I mean, that was part of the reason why I started this podcast was I love learning from people. I think you can learn from anybody like the most powerful CEO in a Fortune 500 company to who just somebody you meet on the corner of the street. Like everybody has yeah. a story and it's about sowing those seeds. Like there have been opportunities that have come my way so randomly. You know, I might have been sitting mm-hmm. next to somebody at a wedding and then like two years later, you know, we were Facebook friends and then they, you know, reached out to me or whatever. It's kind of just spreading the love and hoping that, yeah. you know, one day it'll grow and blossom into something amazing. Totally. I think that everyone can be part of your community in some way. And the people that you see the immediate connection with, you know, run with those. And I think the point is just don't discount anyone as part of your community because you may find a really cool correlation for them later on. And you do a great job of building community too. I feel like you've done an awesome job with getting, you know, this network of different influencers and like minded entrepreneurs together. I mean, case in point, this 
whole series, you're probably bringing together an awesome community of people who all bring tremendous different skills and values to the table. I hope so. I hope so. I just love talking. <laughs> so. and, yeah, I mean, it's a fun way to kind of grow and learn. And I don't know, I have fun listening to other people's stories. Yeah. And I think there were so many times when I was starting my business. I mean, I so, you know, we used to be in a mastermind together. Like I Mm -hmm. completely isolated myself, which Mm -hmm. was not natural to my personality. And I just completely shut myself off from the world. But there were so many times when I was like connecting with people. I was like, wow, this would make an awesome podcast or like someone else needs to hear this, you know? And so that's just been the whole purpose behind this whole podcast series is just to spread some of those like ah ahas that I might have to others. Yeah. When we're starting out, there's this term someone taught me a while ago, like when I was in DC, but it's paralysis by analysis. Like you become paralyzed by the fact that you're analyzed. There's so much information getting thrown at you when you're starting your business. You're trying to learn everything from like, what's the next step I need to take tomorrow to like, oh my gosh, how do I incorporate and all these things that kind of are swimming around in your head that you almost get paralyzed by like, what's the next step I actually need to take. And I think the thing to remember is, you know, one step at a time, don't be overwhelmed, even though that's easier said than done and surround yourself with people because I think that's where you'll learn rather than you kind of sitting there and doing the research and doing the research and doing the research, there's a million people out there who've done it and who have done it well. And maybe if, even if they haven't done it well, those failures are probably even the more amazing learning experiences where you can really draw good information. So talk to those people, talk to the people who have failed miserably before you, because they're going to teach you exactly what missteps they took that will help you avoid those same mistakes. Yeah. And I say, if you want to know yourself really, really well, go out on your own and try and start a business because it's difficult. It's it's not just your craft that you have to work on, but it's also learning all these new skill sets yeah. about just how to operate a business. And I think sometimes it really, at least my experience was it really forced me to look inside myself and realize like, what were some of those things, those yeah. kind of the weaknesses or those things that always kept tripping up. I kept tripping over throughout my life and I haven't resolved all of them, but it just makes you yeah. so aware of your own issues. Absolutely. You become everything. I mean, for people who are at the beginning of the business and either not quite at that frustration point yet or starting to reach it of like, wow, this is a lot of work. I mean, you become everything. You're the sales rep. You're the accountant. You're the you know creator of content. I mean, there's a lot you juggle as a solopreneur when you're just starting out. And even if you have a business partner, chances are, you both are probably splitting those same duties. And until you get to a place where you're able to hire or bring on freelancers or consultants, it's tough to juggle and wear every single hat that, you know, a larger company would wear. Yeah, girl. I feel like I need or to have like, employees doing. Yeah. I feel like I need to like toast to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. So what are some exciting things that are coming up for you and for the Heart Series? Yeah. So we are, well, I'm at this really interesting place in my business where we're starting to do a lot more big brand pitches and starting to have some brands approach us that maybe haven't ever been seen as socially impactful, but want to be seen that way. So that's been really exciting. Like we mentioned earlier, the third year of the conference is coming up this February, February 16th and 17th in LA, location to be determined. I'm actually visiting a bunch of venues this month. So we'll have that kind of hammered down hopefully in the next few months, but it'll definitely be in LA. And we've got some amazing companies and speakers that we've been in conversations with. So I feel like each year it gets better and better. And I'm biased because I, I don't know, I created something that I really love, but I feel like the feedback we've gotten is that, and you know, you even said so yourself earlier that people have enjoyed it. So that's kept us going with this, even though it's sort of a side project for both our businesses. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of what's in the immediate future and just kind of looking towards that and getting excited for all the fun people that will hopefully come out for this year's event. 
Awesome. Well, we're going to definitely link up all of that stuff in the show notes because I want to and I have show notes and I love saying that. (laughs) I I love that I'm going to be in your show notes. (laughs) And so all that information will be available on the website so you won't miss a beat. And so I'd like to end all of my podcasts by asking a question of all my guests. And it's basically fill in the blank. Something I know for sure is. Yeah. And I think I said this earlier. Something I know for sure is that Every person can make an impact, big or small. All you need to do is look around you, find the teeniest problem and solve it. And that's really ultimately what your business is. And if you're doing that, you are going to be tremendously impactful. Thank you, Megan. That was amazing. I always love talking to you. I think we Thank could you, keep talking for another like hour or so. Totally. But we'll keep it brief. Thank you so much for being here. And we'll see you at the Heart Series. Great. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, Nanette. So there you go. If you're interested in the Heart Series, Megan has generously offered a special discount code just for Office Talk listeners. There are a limited number of tickets available, but if you use the code Office Talk at checkout, and that's all one word and all in caps, you can save $200 off the ticket price. And this discount is available only through October 31st, so make sure you head on over to the Heart Series and get your ticket because it's a great conference. I've attended myself and would highly recommend it. If you want to learn more about Megan, the Heart Series, and all the work that she's doing, you can get all those links over in the show notes, which are available at annettestepanian.com forward slash podcast forward slash 10. And that's the number 10. Thank you so much for listening and for being here every week. Thank you for subscribing, for doing the work that you do. And I can't wait to talk to you later.